Namaste. So let's talk about the practice that is related to all this Upanishadic wisdom about Svapna and Sushupti consciousness, dreams and deep sleep. And basically the practice, the related practice, is lucid dreaming and lucid deep sleep. In other words, bringing awareness into these states. So you know, how do you do that? Well, <laughs> Everybody wants to know how, but few people want to put the effort into developing the state of being required to do the method. So, in other words, this is not something you just do like over a weekend. It's something that is mastered over maybe weeks or months or even years of practice. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you have to purify the mind. The mind is filled with so much junk, especially these days with media. You have to cut out all the sources of mental agitation. I would recommend very strongly to stop reading the news. Because, I mean, the news is like 90% bullshit anyway. So, and besides, what does it have to do with you? You know? Somebody dropped a bomb on somebody else in another country far, far away. So what? You know, these two idiots are fighting. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with me. It's not even any of my business. It's all up to them, you know, to solve their problems. It's not going to influence me uh, as far as voting. I don't vote because I don't think the polls are honest. And in any case, I don't get to pick the people I want to run for office. Some some idiots in, the, you know, a political party are doing that. So it has nothing to do with me. It does not appeal to me. It's not a field for me to express myself. So I don't want to have anything to do with it. So political news, economic news, man, I made my pile. You know, I'm financially secure for the rest of my life. I don't have to work. I can live comfortably, not opulently, but I have adequate provisions and adequate facilities for my lifestyle, which is very simple. It's not like I'm out there, you know, buying stuff every day. I go to the store like once a week <laughs> or twice a week. If I have to go downtown for any reason, like for any special things like Ayurvedic medicine or to go to the bank or anything. Otherwise, I stay home. So that's another point. Isolation. You want to be socially isolated as much as possible. Because what are people talking about? All nonsense. Huh? Ignorance. Totally ignorance. So I don't go on social media either for the same reason. I don't want these people cluttering up my mind with their nonsense. So, okay. You want to isolate yourself from sources of disinformation, misinformation, and even, you know, true information about stuff that doesn't really serve you, doesn't really help you, isn't about you, isn't really any of your business. And I made a video a long time ago, none of your business. Check it out. <laughs> so then what do we listen to? What do we engage with? What kind of content is supportive of a pure mind, a steady mind, a quiet and calm mind? Well, of course, sacred content. So every day you want to read the scriptures, not just read, study the scriptures. Go deep into them, find the meaning. I very much recommend 
the program Liquid Text. And I'll put a link in the video description that you can download and use it on PDFs or websites that have spiritual content. When I say spiritual, I don't mean somebody's opinion or somebody's interpretation. I mean going to the original scriptures, in our case, the Vedic scriptures, downloading. I especially recommend the editions of the Upanishads published by Ramakrishna Mission. Ananda Ashram is their publishing ashram. It's up in Uttarakhand. And those editions are the best. The quality is excellent. They use IAST transliteration, which makes it very accurate and scholarly. And of course, they have the commentaries by Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya is simply the best. He's got it. <laughs> Everybody else is no, doubtful. Huh? So stick with Shankaracharya and Ananda Ashram. Get yourself a good dictionary. A good English dictionary, assuming English is the language you're going to be working in, and a good Sanskrit dictionary. I recommend SanskritDictionary.com. I'll also put a link there. So what else? So you want to look up the words that you don't understand, and you want to go deep into their derivation and meaning, and you want to contemplate. This is the third thing. Cut out wrong sources of information. Connect yourself with and study the original sources of spiritual wisdom. And the third thing is contemplate what you learn. Contemplation is a wonderful thing. Contemplation, I mean, it's almost like meditating on a mantra where you recall and think about inspiring passages or interesting passages that you have read in the various scriptures. And I strongly recommend following your interest. In other words, not any pre-planned program or syllabus, uh, but follow your interest. If you're interested in dreams, for example, look up everything that talks about dream consciousness, svapna. And even if that means you have to jump from one scripture to another, that's fine. Especially in liquid text, you can make links from one scripture to another, and you can extract notes. And I mean, it's just so useful. Man, get it. <laughs> just get it. huh? Try it. You'll see. Then what? Well, you have to be really sleepy. This is why most ashrams, most, you know, serious ashrams, I don't mean, you know, the tourist ashrams or, you know, today's Buddhist ashrams, uh, because most of them are just there for money-making purposes. But a, a real ashram will make you restrict your sleep. Like the ashram that I was trained up in when I was a brahmachari back in, what was it? Oh, my God, 1971. <laughs> we got no more than six hours sleep a night. Yeah, we could take a couple hours nap in the afternoon. So it wasn't like we were uh, on any kind of health threatening or sanity threatening, uh, you know, suppressive program. But what we did was always feel a little sleepy because we never got like straight eight hours sleep. And so when you finally do get to lay down and take rest, your body's tired. It wants to go to sleep. A lot of people tell me, oh, I can't sleep. I get, I have insomnia. My mind is wandering. It's, you know, my thoughts are going here and there, jumping like a monkey. And I say, well, how much exercise do you get? 
How much sleep do you get? Oh, nine or ten hours, you know. <laughs> exercise? Oh, I, I don't exercise. I don't believe in it or whatever. You're an idiot. You have to exercise every day. I walk an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. In fact, as soon as I finish making this video, I'm going to go up on the roof and walk. And walking is excellent for contemplation. Don't walk on the street. Don't walk anywhere where there's a lot of people. Find a quiet place. I'm very lucky. I have a a big flat roof and I can walk around on the roof and there's absolutely no disturbance. No dogs, no cars, no people, no shops. Beautiful. That's where you want to be in the forest or on the beach or in the jungle or someplace where you won't be disturbed. You can simply walk and walk until you're tired. Walk until your body is complaining however long that takes. For me, it's about an hour. My body is saying, hey, man, knock it off. You know, slow down, will you? <laughs> because I walk fast. In the beginning, I walk fast. When, I, when my body starts complaining, I walk slower. I'll reduce the size and tempo of my steps. Uh, but I continue. That's the point. I go past the point where my body wants to stop. And then when I finally do lay down to sleep, <laughs> no problem going to sleep. But the way that you go to sleep is very important as far as maintaining awareness during dreams and deep sleep. Now, you won't be able to do this in the beginning. In the beginning, like everybody else, you'll just fall asleep and go into dreams and forget about everything. <laughs> so I recommend the use of a mantra. Whatever mantra you find attractive, whether it's a Shiva mantra, Shakti mantra, or a mantra for any other deity, that's fine. Ride that mantra into sleep. In other words, when you lay down to go to sleep, don't think about your day. Don't think about, you know, uh, the war that's going on wherever. Don't think about anything, actually. Just concentrate on your mantra. And your mantra will bring your mind to a state of one-pointed attention. And that's what you want. You want to become the watcher. And watch what happens in your mind as you fall asleep. Now, it's very interesting. I think I shared recently that when I lay down to go to sleep, I don't use a mantra anymore. I have mastered the discipline to the point where I just empty my mind. I tell my mind, OK, we're done for the day, you know. And it stops. And then I see a stage, as it were. Huh? It's not actually like a, a theater stage with curtains and all that. It's, it's not like that. But it's like this empty space with lights huh? or a light. Of course, that's the light of the self shining on the stage of the mind or the space of the mind. And because that space is not perfectly clear, a little bit reflects, you know, like being in, like shining a flashlight in a room that has a bunch of incense smoke in it. Or driving in a car on a foggy morning. And you see the headlights reflected. Well, actually, it's refracted by the tiny particles of smoke or uh, water in the air. So it's the same kind of thing where the mind is never fully quiescent. It can be peaceful, but it doesn't ever fully stop. There's always these little seeds of thoughts floating around. <laughs> and they will reflect 
the light of the self. So now the idea is not to engage in self-conversation, not to, you know, remember um, something about your, your day or about something that happened, you know, a long time ago. Stop all that activity and just be with that space. And you will see gradually the arising of dreams. And you'll be able to watch these dreams with awareness. And you'll be able to even sometimes interact with the dreams or change what happens in the dreams. It's very interesting stuff. <laughs> but the aim of this practice is to sustain this awareness until you go into sushupti. And then to be in sushupti with awareness. Now, the best training for this, which I can totally recommend, is the practice of samadhi. Samadhi is the yogic terminology for it. Uh, but as we spoke about recently in the series on Svapna and Sushupti consciousness, it is the practice of the four transcendent jhanas of the Buddha. Infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception nor non-perception. These are four states that occur in order, in sequence, as you become more and more peaceful. Now, of course, the ultimate peace is Brahman, also known as Nibbana, Nirvana, or Samadhi, huh? where there is nothing happening, no objects, huh? not even any space anymore. Because if you can perceive space, it's, it's not really emptiness. It's only nothingness. <laughs> so when you get to the point of emptiness, there isn't even space anymore. There isn't even a field where something could happen. There's no more time, no more dimension. What to speak of objects. So... If you cultivate these jhanas during the day as a meditation practice, then when you go into sushupti at night, you'll recognize it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is neither perception nor non-perception. I'm perceptic. I'm capable of being aware of things, but there's nothing to be aware of because I have transcended space and time. That's Brahman. That's actually Turiya. And when the body falls off and the mind is no longer, then that's Turiya Tita. That is the eternal state. That is what we're shooting for here. That's what we're aiming for. So we have done this quite extensive series on Svapna and Sushupti. So now you know a lot about them. You have a lot of context, a lot of background on these states, which most people completely lack. Huh? They don't really understand. They just think that waking consciousness is the most important. And these other, while I'm asleep, this is only a dream. It's nothing. Well, it is nothing. <laughs> Sushupti especially, is nothing. But that nothing is very powerful because empty space, the infinite space, that is the first transcendental jhana, is actually the soil in which the root of desire takes its birth. It has tremendous creative potency just like the ground state in physics. It's not zero. It's full of energy, but that energy is in a virtual state. It's unmanifest. So when you come into that state with a desire, 
it automatically begins to manifest. It may not be visible. You may not notice it. But it's happening. And you can trust it. If there's some result that you want, and of course the best thing to desire is liberation. If you think of that at the time just before entering Sushupti or Samadhi or whatever you want to call it, then that will happen. It will grow. If it's a big desire like liberation, it may take some time to grow. It's only natural because it's an extraordinary desire. It's not any of the trivial things of this world or anything like that. In fact, it's going beyond this world completely. That's what we want. And even if you fail at this practice, even if you try it and you wind up just falling asleep, <laughs> That's fine. Because you're carrying that desire into the creative field, it will happen. It just might take some time. Because how many years have you gone thinking that waking consciousness is the main thing? Waking consciousness is the least interesting state. Because in waking consciousness, there's death. See, th that is the operative zone of samsara, birth and death, is all happening in Jagrat. It doesn't happen in dreams. And of course, nothing happens in deep sleep. But as Shankara says in the, his commentary on Brihadaranyaka, 437, I believe, that one who is in Sushupti has transcended the forms of death, which are desire, ignorance, and action. Remember the three little things in the center of the Buddhist wheel. Those are the root of samsara. Those are the origin of paticca samuppada. Those are the cause of our taking birth, going through life controlled by karma, and then having to die at the end and take another one and so on. We want to get out of that. So the way to do it is directly. Huh? We already go into swapna and sushupti every night. So just ride it, man, you know, get on and ride like a motorcycle. <laughs> Sometimes I have dreams of being of riding a motorcycle. <laughs> but what it means is you keep your attention, you keep the flame of awareness alive in these deep states. And you will learn more about yourself and about reality and about what really controls things and how things really happen. Huh? You will learn more about desire and you will experience freedom from desire in those states. So this is very much worthwhile practice. And really, this is the reason why we did the whole series. Huh? Now, the next videos are going to be back in Mandukya Upanishad uh, because we were getting to the verses about dreams and deep sleep, but there wasn't that much background. And because I know most people lack that background, that's why I did the previous series. But uh, after this, we're going to go back to Mandukya and cover Sushupti, and Turiya, and then you're going to learn about the uh, objectives of these practices. And this is the gateway, huh? especially Sushupti, is called the gateway to dreams and waking consciousness. But it also works the other way. It's also the gateway to Turiya, 
Huh? You can go through a gateway or either direction. So if Sushupti is the gateway that creates dreams and waking life, then it's also the gateway to the transcendent consciousness that is the actual objective of self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.